All right, y'all, please stop it <laughs> now. I keep hearing people say that you can build a coyote swap cheap. Now, cheap to me might be different between the two of us. However, I did see online that somebody said that they can do a coyote swap for four thousand dollars. I saw that I saw that post and I just yelled, "Prove it!" So. Today I'm going to show you the cost between a 450 rear wheel horsepower SN95 motor and a Coyote swapped SN95. And the price isn't even close. What's up my people and welcome to the SN95 Power Channel. Now before we get into this battle, let me make a couple of things clear. So hear me very clearly when I say this. We're not against coyotes. We're not against coyote swaps. But we are against spending a lot of money. It's the thuggish, thuggish Two, and most importantly, I just, I just did that. It's uh, most importantly, this battle is between a stock Coyote motor versus a on three turbo kit on a fourth generation V8 motor. Let me say that again for the people in the back. This battle, this battle is between a stock Coyote motor, Gen one, two or three, versus a on three turbo kit on a V8 small block, well not very small block forward, but a 4.62 valve, either 4.64 valve or a push rod 5.0 motors. Those are the three motors that came on the SN95 platform in V8 forms. So that's it. Don't talk about anything else. Don't come at me with anything else besides stock Howie motor versus an on three turbo SN95 V8 motor. That's the premise of this battle. Now that we have that out the way, let's dig a little bit further into this. First, if you are not looking to make more than 500 horsepower with a Coyote swap, I am talking to you. Now, if you want to build a Coyote swap to make more horsepower, then I'm not talking to you. And here's why I say this. The Coyote motor is a great platform to add a supercharger to. And make big, reliable power. Now, I hear people say reliable a lot with the Coyote motor, but isn't any stock motor that you don't go crazy with horsepower reliable? But yes, you can add a Gen 5 Whipple to a Coyote and make 700 plus rear horsepower. Pretty simple formula. Only thing you have to do to that motor is upgrade a couple of components and that Gen 5 Whipple Coyote motor will last a long time and eat all day at that horsepower level. What you can't do is that same formula to a 4.6 motor or a push rod motor from the SN95 platform. Add enough boost to a stock motor, one of those motors, 4.6 or 5.0, and it's not gonna last long. <laughs> Yeah, I know y'all gonna say you, you, you know a guy online or a friend's cousin, uncle who makes 800 rear horsepower out of his stock motor. The likelihood for you and me to have that success is very slim. So that gets me to this point in this battle. Which motor wins between a on three turbo SN95 motor or a gen one, two or three Cali swap price wise? Now on this channel, when I talk about something fast, I'm pretty much talking about something in the 10 second range, you know, high tens. As long as it hits that 10.99, I consider that 10 seconds. Now I know fast is relative, but a 10 second SN95 is very fast and will beat a lot of cars on the street and at the track. In fact, a 10 second SN95 is cheaper than you think. Now that I laid down the premise, let's dig into these motors. 
All right, first off, let's start with the Coyote motor. Now, as competition from brands like Chevrolet and Dodge revamped their muscle car lineups, Ford took the initiative and launched the all new first generation 5.0 liter V8 dubbed the Coyote. That released in 2011. Coyote motors are a series of V8 engines produced by Ford. They are part of the modular engine family and are well known for their performance and versatility. The first Coyote engine was introduced in the 2011 Ford Mustang GT, and it was designed to offer balance, power, efficiency, and reliability. The original 5-liter Coyote produced 412 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque. The Gen 1 motors featured an aluminum block, aluminum heads, that helped reduce the weight while maintaining strength, the engine includes dual overhead camshafts, variable cam timing, and high flow intake manifold. These technologies contribute to the high performance and efficiency. The Gen 1 Coyotes are known for its ability to rev higher than the 4.6 and push rod 5.0 motors with a red line of 7,000 RPM. In 2015, Ford introduced the Gen 2 Coyote motor. Power increased to 435 horsepower and 400 foot pounds of torque. Or, and, uh, which one is it, y'all? I, I, I always say pound feet of torque when I talk about engines. You know, there's kind of like a little debate going on. Is it foot pounds or pound feet? Leave a comment down below. Improvements include revised cylinder heads for better flow, larger intake and exhaust valves, a new intake manifold design, stronger connecting rods. Ford also improved the TIVCT system. They included new camshaft profiles for better performance. The Gen 2 red line to 7,000 RPM, just like the Gen 1, but it had better performance characteristics. Looking to further separate itself from the competition, Ford released the Gen 3 Coyote in 2018. Power further increased to 460 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque. Improvements were the following. The fuel system had a port and direct injection design for better fuel and power. The compression is 12.0 to 1. The cylinder heads were revised and plasma transfer wire arc cylinder lined for reduced weight and increased. Oh, oh, hold up, y'all. I'm going to leave this in here. I'm not going to cut this out. This is a mouthful to say right here. So let me, let me try this again. I'm reading the script. So this is not off the top of my head. All right. Uh, where am I at? Improvements included um, a direct and port injected fuel system that gave you better fuel economy and power the compression ratio was 12 to 1 the cylinder heads were revised and a plasma transfer wire arc cylinder liners for reduced weight and increased durability nailed it ford enhanced the tivct system which included new camshaft profiles and a new intake manifold design the red line increases 75,000 rpms for even higher performance the current Gen 4 Coyote motor pushed the horsepower arms race even further with 489 horsepower and 418 pound-feet of torque. Now, I'm not going to include this engine in this battle. Let's pin this right here, but you'll see why I'm not going to include this once we get into the cost of these motors. Each generation of Coyote motors has seen a significant improvement in power, efficiency, and technology, making them increasingly popular amongst performance enthusiasts. We now have a good idea of power outputs from each of these Coyote generations with the Gen 1 being the lowest horsepower wise. Now, if we want to do a Coyote swap, we can't just throw the, a Coyote in our fourth gen Mustang and just make it run. It's more than just installing the motor and starting it up. There's a lot of little accessories that we need to get this car to run. We need brackets for our serpentine system. We need some kind of way to control the Coyote motor. Things like drivetrain and fuel systems will not be included in this battle because you'll need to upgrade those things no matter which way you go. All right, so where do you find a donor Coyote motor? One popular option right now is Facebook Marketplace. So let's dive into Facebook and see what we can find. All right, so let's get to browsing Facebook Marketplace and see what we can find. It's just a quick search. So let me say this. 
what's available to me and what's um, the price or the market for for me locally might be different from you. So if you see something that I'm um, going to highlight here and it's off where you live, leave a comment down below and tell me how much you see it on Facebook Marketplace. So like I say, I'm in Illinois and this is a 250 mile radius from where I live. And first thing I see is this um, pretty much a loan block for a 2019 F-150 motor. So it's um, pretty bare bones on the things that you would need. So by this being an F-150 motor, you're gonna put a different intake manifold on it anyway. And you really don't need the um, serpentine drive off of this because you're gonna need an aftermarket version of that regardless. So $2,800 is what we see right now. And okay, so this seems like this is just an advertisement. You know, this is just saying, hey, I have some, some cores. So I can't go with that. All right, so this is what you wanna um, see sometimes on Facebook, something like attention grabber. $1,500 Gen 250 Coyote motor. Now, if this is true for $1,500, then come holl come holler at me because I am a hedge fund manager and I will take your money and tell you exactly what you would need to buy to become a millionaire overnight. Um, Gen 2 Cowdy engine pulled from a non-running F-150. Turns over by hand. The price is okay, 1500 bucks. But if this ad is true, and I think there's more to this listing than um, meets the eye, like Transformers more than meets the eye. But if you buy this for $1,500 and you go and install it and it's a dud, then you pretty much have a $1,500 brick sitting on your hand. So unless you're plan is to buy this $1,500 Coyote motor, tear it apart and rebuild it. That would be the only reason why I would buy this Coyote motor. But if you do that, you're just adding more to the cost of doing a Coyote swap. So for us, I'm not going to use this as a good example. What do y'all think about this? Leave a um, comment down below. Would you buy this motor? Now, He's saying it's non-running. What, what does that mean? It could, it could mean a million things. Turns over by hand. It is complete from oil pan to intake manifold, but a lot of stuff you don't you're not gonna you're not gonna need. So for me, that's a hard pass if I'm doing a calorie swap. I want something more complete and something that I know is um, going to run. And you know that's the thing with Facebook Marketplace is. It's a crapshoot because sometimes people are just unloading their junk. So here we go, $800, um, it needs rebuild. At least this person is being honest. Still haven't really found. So here we go, a Gen 3 Cowdy V8, $3,700. Okay. Uh, testing the waters. Asking price, Gen 3, Batavia. So if I'm in the market for a Coyote swap, I will look at an ad like this, uh, 3750 for a Gen 3 Coyote. I think that's a pretty fair, fair price. Not much details about it, but um, it, he alleges that it has 50, 54,000 miles on it. And 
doesn't say if it's running or anything. It had allegedly some upgrades to it. Um, you would get, okay, so this stuff is, hasn't been installed, but um, the new timing chain, no, new timing chain, phasers, throttle body, um, camshafts, sprockets. So pretty much all the stuff that you need to make this um, Coyote motor stronger. Honestly, if, if I'm doing this, if I'm Coyote swapping, I am staying away from Facebook Marketplace. There's just too many scams out here. And for my money, I would not want to get burnt. So let me show you where I would go to. I would go to the site, car-parts.com. Now, this is just like a, um, a database from a bunch of junkyards. And you can go through here and tell them exactly what you're looking for. You can set the radius of how far you wanna travel. And the good thing about this, a lot of times these car, these motors are still in the vehicle and you can hear it run and they will come with some kind of warranty. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself a 100 mile radius. But just right off the bat, uh, 2012 F-150, 135,000 miles, $3,500. Now, I know y'all, a lot of y'all are gonna say, oh man, you know, I, I, I just saw a F-150 motor for $1,500 or I, I found me a F-150 motor for 200 bucks off of whatever website. That works for you, but I don't think a lot of people who are willing to invest this kind of money is gonna take a gamble off of something off of, you know, some sketchy listing. So if, you know, I'm scrolling through $2,700 is probably about the cheapest with 200,000 miles. $2,800, 160,000 miles, I think that's a pretty good deal. It's for 2012, let's see, 2,700, $2,200, 175,000 miles. Really not seeing anything under 2000 here's $2,100, 2195 all right, $2,000, almost 200,000 miles, $2,200, here you go, $1,900, 97 so me personally, I would want to find something right around 150,000 miles. And it seems like to get that 150,000 miles, I'm gonna to have to spend around $2,200. So I'm not gonna scroll through all this. I'm just averaging a lot of these prices out. It looks like $2,700. And like I said, what I, what I like about this is I'm buying this from a wrecking yard. Um, sometimes these cars were, are able to start. You can hear the motor. Sometimes they won't. But the good thing is they will give you a warranty on this and that's the key. All right, so you got your motor. I'm gonna say $2,200 and so now we need a control system and we need some kind of um, serpentine drive kit. We are going to get a, a cart going and we're just doing very basic stuff here. Like this, this isn't um, nothing exotic. You know, we're not gonna do a supercharger. We're We're just doing a um, kind of a bone stock cowie swap. 
Now let's, let's start with engine management because you got a couple of different choices. You can go Holly or you can go with this power by the hour. I'm going to go with the control pack. And since we're using a F-150 motor, we have to use the F-150 control pack. So Gen 1, All right, so what this control pack is gonna give you everything that you need to control your Gen 1 Cali motor. So let's add that to the card. So we have a way to control the Cali motor. Now let's Let's figure out how we're going to do a drive accessory. So complete drive accessory. Natural aspirated. And you see, you know, you might see this price right here, $500. You're like, oh man, that's fairly cheap. 500 bucks. And so as I do this, I'm not saying this is the only way that you can do a Coyote swap, but if there's some stuff out here that I don't know about that you guys can enlighten me on, please leave a comment down below. But as far as I know, Power by the Hour is um, the only place I know of to get like this accessory drive kit. So if you're gonna do the accessory drive, you have to think about what are you gonna do? Are you gonna have power steering? Are you gonna have AC? For me, I have to have power steering. I'm going to reuse the OEM power steering pump that I have. I'm going to reuse my um, OEM AC compressor. And so if you have all that stuff, then you really don't have to worry about all these other add-ons. So that's $780. Now let's go to our cart. So $2,779.98. That's pretty much a bare, bare bone county swap accessories. Add the $2,000 on top of um, this because the Coyote motor that I would want is right around $200, $2,000. That's kind of an average. You know, I saw one for $1,900. I saw them as high as $2,700. But one nice one that I saw was around $2,100 that had 160,000 miles on it. So we have $4,700 tied into the motor and the things that we need to start the Coyote. Coyote. That's not, I'm not including K members. I'm not including long tube headers. I mean, these are things that you're gonna have to, actually, I yes, I am going to include that because you have to do a K member swap in order to do a Coyote swap. So we have to add this K member on here. All right, UPR. So 500 bucks. Now that we look at the Coyote motors, let's take a look at the stock SN95 motors. The fourth gen Mustang had three V8 motors over its lifespan. The 4.62 valve, the 4.64 valve, and the pushrod 5.0 motor. Now I'm going to skip going over these motors in as far as details and just jump right to this and say that the 4.62 valve motor is the best motor to build your SN95 off of. Now, you can watch my full series video of me breaking down why the two valve is the best motor. But for time's sake, instead of making this an hour long video, let me just give you these two reasons why the 4.62 valve is the best out of um, the other motors for the fourth gen platform. They all have the same limitations, 
pretty much horsepower wise in stock form. Now the second reason, probably the most important is they are very easy to find a junkyard replacement motor. Ford put these things in just about everything in the late 90s and the early 2000s. All right, so now that we know what motor we're going to use, let me show you how to get Coyote power out of a stock 4.6 Mustang. So in order to do this cheaper than a Coyote swap, you have to do a couple of things. First thing, head over to the ON3 Performance uh, website and select the turbo kit for $2,600. Like you, you really don't have to add anything. I know they have a lot of options here that you, you can select, but you just need the base kit. Now, remember, we're not including the fuel system or drivetrain parts for this. Just a turbo kit. Now, you can install an ON3 turbo kit with the stock K-member. It's not fun, but it is possible. So, with this kit installed, you can push the stock 4.62 valve engine to 450 rear horsepower and be relatively safe. Plenty of guys are pushing that stock motor to 450 rear horsepower and a little bit beyond that without blowing it up. So now that we have the ability to get 450 horsepower, 450 rear horsepower, can you get a 450 rear horsepower S95 into the tens? Absolutely. Like I say, it's, it's well documented online, lots of videos out there. But you will have to do a little suspension work and you will have to do some weight reduction. But what this 450 rear horsepower would do is it will give you close to Gen 3 power at a significantly lower price. All right, so the big question is, who wins this battle? So if we look at it for from a price per horsepower standpoint, it's clear that the 4.62 valve wins and it's not even close. So I know some of y'all are gonna cry foul about this and you're gonna say this battle is not apples to apples. So let me explain to y'all why this is apples to apples. Like even if you if you take a Gen 1 Coyote, and I'm not even including like long tube headers for the Gen Gen 1 Coyote. I'm just saying you would use stock headers. So if, if you take a Gen 1 Coyote, you use the, and I'm not even including using the Mustang intake manifold. I'm just, I'm in the price. So I'm just saying, if you do this, you take a F-150 Gen 1 Coyote, you put long tube headers on there, and the, the Mustang um, intake manifold, you can get that motor to make around 450 rear wheel horsepower. At the same time, you take a 4.62 valve, you put around 10 PSI on that thing with the ON3 turbo kit, and it's going to be right around 450 rear wheel horsepower. This is why it's an apples to apples battle. Now, clearly, this, remember, let me tell you, let me refresh our memory. This is not a battle of which engine is stronger and which engine has the most horsepower potential. That would clearly be the Coyote. This is just a NA Coyote swap versus an ON3 turbo two valve swap. Both of those motors will make relatively around the same horsepower. But what I'm trying to document is the price difference between the two is, is a huge void between the price difference between those two. And to say that you you can build a cheap Coyote swap, is it's just not gonna happen. The Booster 2 valve will make the same power output as a NA Coyote. That's how this comparison works. So my, my last video I did with regards to the Coyote swap being the end of the Coyote swap, I got some very interesting comments on that. So please leave your comments. I, I wanna hear your comments. Like even if you wanna rip into me about this, leave a comment. Hey, my, my skin is thick. You're not gonna offend me by saying I'm wrong. So. Um, I appreciate y'all rocking with me on this long video. Hey, big shout out to the SM95 Power team members. And until next time, God bless.